All right, uh, in this section, we are going to talk about two modules. And these two are going to be the target and the spider. First, just a quick summary of what they do, and then we will go into details. So the target, you will actually quickly figure it out, but the target is a, just a, a structured view of everything what's gone through your burp. So you see here everything what's ever passed your burp street in a very well structured view. And uh, the spider is a, a web spider. So if you're familiar with the uh, concept of web crawling or web spidering, then that's exactly what it does. Uh, so it's going to try to discover the whole application for you to find out all the existing pages. So what it does, it's going to start from I actually try to draw it for you. So it's going to start with one page and then collect all the references on that page to other pages. This could be like an href or some JavaScript reference or, or a form, uh, what you can submit or anything like that. And so it, it collects all these references and then loads them and do the same on the new page. So it loads this one as well, do it here as well. So that's how it, it discovers all the available sites. At the end, what you're going to have is a tree where all the nodes are uh, pages and all the links are references between those pages. Right? So you will have a really good overview, overview what's in your application. This is good because sometimes you could do this manually. So you could come to the, uh, you could come to, uh, for instance, to, to the web code and then start clicking all the links and start submitting everything. But for one, it would take a lot of time. And it's also possible that you don't see everything because for instance, uh, a link was hidden on the page or there was a hidden form or, or something was in a command. Uh, so it's possible that you just don't see it here on the interface, but it's still uh, in your HTML code. And the spider will load that as well. And it's also much faster than, than you. So that's why the spider is good. Uh, there are also uh, disadvantages of using a spider. I actually don't use it that much uh, because, because the spider is going to click on more or less on everything. So it can also delete something from your application. So if there is a, if there is some uh, something in the application like an event or or like a, a document saved there and if there is a delete button there uh, then the spider will click on the delete button and it's possible that it's going to delete it from there because that's how the spider works so you definitely shouldn't use spider if it's a productive system and also you need to think about this uh, when you consider using the spider it also has some options, which I, most of them are, are, are pretty state for this forward. So I don't think it's important to talk about it. Um, I suggest you to check out it yourself, which is important is this form submission. So you can define how verb should react when it finds a form. So forms should be filled with some kind of data. So that's what you can do here. Um, either say you don't want to submit forms or you can say that you always want to have like a pop-up window and fill out the form yourself or you can give here some some uh, basic data uh, what should be used to fill out forms it depends on you of course if you say prompt for guidance then it will be much slower because you always get this pop-up uh, window and it's gonna be also more annoying i guess and um Another important point is this um, application login. So 
alone the spider couldn't spider applications when there where you need to log in because it wouldn't be able to log in without knowing the credentials so it's the same with the normal forms um, you can say what to do in that case either give credentials and then burp is going to try to uh, use those credentials it's also possible that it wouldn't work because because how the the login form is implemented but burp will try but uh, it can also prompt you for guidance that's again you, you're going to get this this window and you need to fill out yourself the rest is more or less about uh, speed and throttling so that's uh, not really important for us right now and uh, that's more or less the spider so let's go to the target and then we'll see how to use the spider. So as I already mentioned, the target is only a, a well-structured view of the content which went through Burp. You see, I have quite a lot of things here already. These are all the URLs which I visited through Burp, um, partly because sometimes I forgot to, to turn off Burp in the Firefox when I, when I like uh, downloaded the proxy, proxy proxy or something uh, but uh, even if you're like only using burp with your target application you can also see like lots of uh, URLs here because some of the content is not actually loaded from the website what you're testing but from somewhere else like like if uh, the application uses jQuery then the JavaScript might be loaded from the jQuery website or or different images might be loaded from different web pages etc so you could you can always see lots of uh, URLs here, even if you're really focused on your web application. What's important for us right now is that we this is the application which are which we are testing at localhost on eighty eighty, and if we open it, then we're gonna so we are following the structure of the URL. So if you go into web code, then that was the the web code, and then then. Here's the attack. So in the web gold folder, there was the attack and there was the images, JavaScript, etc. And for instance, if you, we come here to the attack, then these are this is the place where we submitted all our requests. So you might remember that, for instance, this one was the, the one which we used for the repeater, uh, the cross-site scripting. And these were only some places when when we were just loading pages and uh, yeah this is the other one which we already used at the beginning to play with the uh, with the password here so here you see all the requests which went through so it's pretty cool to to see things which you might have not noticed in the in the proxy part or when it passed past your browser so it's it's sometimes good to come back here to the target and and look through the urls which you might have uh, missed for instance i'm pretty sure you don't really pay attention to all these images and javascript so what you can do is you see here something interesting like admin.js then you can just come here and say here on the request copy url and then you can come here to the uh, to the browser and in a new tab just say load this url and then you have the the javascript code so always when you find something interesting here, you can always just say copy to copy URL and load it in the browser to actually look at it if if uh, if like the, the HTML code here is not enough or anything like that. Or for instance, here you don't see actually the JavaScript code uh, because it was already cached. So that's why it's good to load it in the browser. So that's basically the target. So it gives you a, a really, really good overview of uh, of the structure of the whole uh, website you are testing. Another in important point is the scope here. So there's this other tab here called scope. Here you can define your test scope. So if you're doing a real, real penetration testing, then you have a permission to test a very well defined scope. Everything else should not be tested because that would be illegal because you only have permission for your scope. So you can come here and define your scope uh, to make sure that, that uh, you don't accidentally test other websites or 
you don't uh, or or any of the automated tools are not testing uh, other pages uh, so you can either do it yourself like adding a new scope by hand or you can come here and like click right click here and say add to scope right and then it was added to your scope if you have like different urls because the application uses different web services then you can add all of them to the scope so let's see how we start the spider actually what we can do here is come here and say uh, spider this host you don't still get this um, this warning that that there might be things which are out of scope there but since under this URL everything is in scope so I will just say yes and then the spider starts as you can see I immediately got this uh, this um, submit form because I need to give the test uh, test data for that so I just say test and submit and then again test submit now if we come back to here uh, to the spider you can see the little statistic here that it uh, it sent uh, 75 requests and uh, by transferred and whatever what is going to happen now is whatever you like load the new page on your website uh, which the spider haven't seen before then then it's gonna spider it automatically right uh, let's see whether we have something new here it was 80 requests now and as, as the spidering goes on uh, you will have more and more data here in your in your target. So just to recap, spidering is good to discover your application, to find out more info about the application, but you need to be careful careful with it because it might do something uh, which you didn't want to. And uh, the target is just uh, a structured view of your application but it's also really good to have a great overview of it. You might want to define your scope to not accidentally test websites which you which you shouldn't. So I suggest you to, to look at the uh, URLs here a little bit, whether you find something in interesting, and then to during the, your further test to keep an eye on the target here and sometimes come back and check whether there's some interesting thing here. And when you're ready, then continue with the next section.